What's up family, peace and blessings. Peace and blessings, Mark the Messenger, we're back in our video. This one's to be about things that only happen to chosen ones. All you chosen ones, you're gonna relate to this video from number one all the way to number seven. I think I might invest in a whiteboard because I wanted to make this like 15 because we all been through it, okay? The number one thing you gotta go through as a chosen one is that you will be labeled crazy or, or weird or whatever, whatever name they give you, right? Because you have the gift of discernment, okay? And what I mean by that is that you're able to see what's really taking place in this world, okay? We know that the presidents are in control. It's a spiritual wickedness in high places. We know that Satan, the devil, is the god of this world, and he's controlling people. The kingdom of darkness is, is empowering this world. We know that. We can see what's really taking place. We can see when demons and evil spirits are operating through a vessel. We can see it. Okay, we can also see when the angels are speaking to us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, it says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, because sometimes we have entertained strangers unaware. But when you're a chosen one, when you're filled with the Spirit, you can see. You can see not only the bad, the demons and devils, but you also can see the angels. Okay, you can see it all. Okay, so this is a thing that you're going to have, which is a gift of discernment, which is also a gift of the Holy Spirit. All chosen ones have the Holy Spirit. You can't call yourself a chosen one if you don't have the Holy Spirit. And people ask me this all the time, but Mark, how can I receive the Holy Spirit? I have multiple videos on this, but um, ask God, ask God and he will give it to you, okay? So that's the number one thing you will notice, okay? This is the number one thing I noticed when I was a chosen one, okay? Is that I was gaining all these type of names all because God blessed me with the gift of the sermon. And it's crazy too, because when God blesses you with a spiritual gift, which is listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, once you start to exercise that in the beginning stages, you're gonna to start to notice that people feel some type of way, okay? And like I said, it's all some spiritual warfare. It's all demonic warfare taking place. People don't want you to reach your call in life. People don't want you to operate in your gifts, okay? That what God has chosen you to do. People don't want that. So you're gonna put labels on you, okay? So always keep that in mind. To give it a sermon, you're gonna be labeled crazy or weird, okay? Number two, you'll be hated by the world because God hated you. But also, okay, we know John chapter 15, verse 18 to 21, where it says that because God has chosen the other world, therefore the world hates you, okay? We know that, but also other chosen ones will gravitate towards you and love you. And it's going to be a genuine connection. It's not going to be a forced friendship or forced relationship. Other chosen ones we can see, okay, because the spiritual connection is a spiritual thing, okay? Those people who are on demon time, they relate to the other demons because that they're on that same, you know, uh, spiritual frequency. But once you have, you know, once you become a chosen one, you're going to gravitate to also other, you know, chosen ones to other people who are following Christ. You know, other people are obeying uh, the commandments, the commandments of God and having the faith in Christ. Okay, so, yes, you're going to be hated by the world, you know, not just the outsiders. Okay, remember the Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 36, that that your enemies are gonna be in your own household. So yes, you could expect your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, the people in your own household, the people that was close to you, the people from you know your family, your blood, to even hate on you too, okay? They could even be professed Christians or whatever religion they subscribe to. Okay, you gotta understand that you're gonna be hated and they won't even know that they're being, when they hate, when they hate on you, they won't even understand it's a kingdom of darkness that people are in there. now. It's not only that. Some people could just hate you because they're projecting. Okay, They see that you're operating the gifts that God has blessed you with, and they're not, so they feel some type of way. So it's not always because you know the demons are bothered. Some people could just be projection. It could be other things. But you know this is a spiritual channel, so I always talk about things spiritually. The things that people don't want to talk about, it's the demons. Okay, This also goes with uh, number three. Okay, Your spirit will bother people's demons or evil spirits. Okay, Yes, you have to know this. You ever... Wonder why some people like you never did nothing to them. Like you don't even know they exist, but they just they have some negative thing to say about you. They're always mad about you. You know, like that's what it is, guys. The spirit, which is being let me make that very clear. The Holy Spirit, okay? When you have the Holy Spirit and you're around someone who has who has a legion of demons on them, who has a legion of evil spirits, they're gonna feel some type of way about you. And you gotta understand that some of these people, it's not that they actually hate you, they actually, you know, they they just those demons, those demons are just riling up, okay? And when someone doesn't have wisdom, when someone doesn't know God because God is love, they're gonna those demons are gonna be used to you know take you out, to talk bad about you, to condemn you, falsely accuse, to hate, slander, gossip. Yes, you gotta understand this. Like I said this in the beginning of this video, all chosen ones have the Holy Spirit. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you gotta understand some people are just gonna have something to say about you, something negative to say about you. You could even be like Christ, okay? Well, I'm not gonna say you can be like Christ because Christ was without, was without sin. The example I'm gonna say is that you know how Christ was a man without sin? He wasn't hurting nobody. He was feeding the poor. He was helping the homeless, right? All, all that type of stuff. And it still hated him. 
So they're gonna hate you too, no matter now, none of us are without sin, but you know, as even as being followers of Christ, we show love for people, there's always gonna be some demon, some evil spirit who's just gonna feel, who's gonna just be bothered by your spirit, okay? And yes, when you have God's presence, you have the Holy Spirit, people will feel it on you. Not only the other chosen ones, but also the demons, they can feel the presence and it bothers them, okay? Some people get jealous and envious about it, but yes, you're gonna notice that the Holy Spirit in you will bother their demons, their evil spirits. Okay. Number four, this is this is what all chosen ones. If, if you're if you say if you think that you haven't been chosen yet, and like you're just now wa watching certain content, and you know you start reading your Bible, and you really you really want to be about this life, you really want to be about this walk. Okay. Number four, you have to, you have to, you have to. This is like very important. Okay. All this is important, but especially number four is you will never give up when fighting sin. Okay. You're always rising. You will never give up fighting the spiritual warfare. You will never give up fighting your flesh, no matter what. Let's say if you did fall, because the Bible does say the righteous fall seven times and he rises up again, but the wicked, they fall into the sheath. The wicked, they don't get back up, okay? When calamity strikes, they, they get, you know, they disappear back in darkness, okay? But the righteous, the chosen, every time you fall, you get back up. So let's say if you did commit a sin, let's say you did uh, backslide or or whatever the case may be, right? You're gonna keep on fighting. You're gonna repent, okay? You're gonna repent of your sins, okay? You're gonna, and what repenting is to, to turn away from something fully, not just so you could cry in a corner and God, please forgive me. And you know, that's not, crying is not uh, repenting. It's actually when you never, you have the intention to just never do it again. So you have true repentance, okay? And God will put you to the test. And not only will God put you to the test, the devil will tempt you too when you give up that sin. So I have multiple videos on that. So always keep that in mind, man. When you give up a sin, the devil's gonna he's gonna come to tempt you because it's never God that tempts us, it's the devil. So yes, a chosen one never gives up and it always keeps fighting. Yes, we may fall one time, two times, three times, five times, seven times, but we're gonna continue fighting. We're gonna continue fighting this flesh. We're gonna continue to fight this spiritual warfare. We're gonna have this armor of God on so we can fight against the principalities. And you know, we're not gonna be given over to temptation by the devil because God always provides a way out when you're tempted. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Okay, number five is God will isolate you to build you back up. There's many times in the Bible where, where the prophets and messengers, etc., etc., the disciples were, were isolated, okay? So I wrote it down. Daniel, when he was in that, in that lion's den, he was isolated. But even then, he might have been isolated with those lions, but there was angels protecting him, okay? God put the angels to protect them to close the lion's mouth, okay? So he, he was isolated, but it was just to build him back up. Okay, next one up was Job. We all know what happened to Job. We all know how his wife told him to curse God and how he was plagued and his children passed away. He lost everything, but in the end, he gained it back up. He was isolated too, okay? Even Christ, even Jesus Christ, Yeshua, when he when he, he told his disciples, I'm going to the mountaintop and pray, he prayed alone. He, he went by himself. Even he went through a little stage of isolation, okay? The next one was Joseph. When his family betrayed him and, and turned his back, on him and thought that they, you know, took him out, deleted him. Okay, even he was in the, in the when he was thrown in, in the den with the um, the war. I mean, he was isolated for a little bit. Okay, next one up is David. When uh, Saul was trying to take out David because he was jealous and envious because David was going to be the next king. He was going to be the next. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> he was going to be the next king, man. Saul didn't like that. Okay, so he and but he was isolated because for protection, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. Okay, next one up is Elijah. Same thing, Jezebel, that witch, that demon. She was trying to take out Elijah. So even God had to isolate Elijah. So let's break this down. Daniel isolated. God was God was testing his faith, and he, I guarantee you, after that, he never was fearful at all. Because if you're in a lion's den with lions that could take you out just like this, and you make it out. I mean, you should, I mean, what, what is fear at that point? You know that God is with you. It's a, it's a clear conscience, okay? So, you know, so Daniel was built back up. Job was, was blessed twice. Christ was restored. Joseph, look what happened to him. Brothers, family tried to take him out. Look what happened to him. He was sitting next amongst the kings of Egypt. Next one up is David. David was a shepherd. And yes, like I said, Saul was jealous and envious, tried to take him out. So God had to isolate him for a little bit just so he could become the king the king of Israel. Woo! Let's go. Next one up. Elijah, that demon, that witch, Jezebel, the harlot, okay? She tried to take out Elijah. So it was just so God could, you know, sometimes when God isolates you, one could be protection. Okay. Next could be, it could just be the test. Okay. Because it's always before that blessing comes, God got to test you. Are you ready for that? Okay. So there's many reasons why God could isolate you, but nonetheless, it's for God's glory. It's for, it's for your greater good. 
Okay, so always keep that in mind. I have, and if you guys have probably seen my videos, I have multiple videos on why God isolates the chosen ones, why isolation is good. And now I also talk about sometimes isolation, isolation can be bad when you're out here, you know, living in willful sin and that. So I talk, I have multiple videos on that. Go and check it out. Number six is God will bless you with many spiritual gifts. Okay, and the reason why God will bless you with many spiritual gifts is not to be boastful, it's not to be arrogant, not to feel like you're better than other people. It is to bless other people. Okay, the spiritual gifts are listed. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I can't probably can't leave on the screen because it's a long verse. So if you guys want to check it out, go look it up, open your Bible. So to bless other people, okay? So it's to edify the body, the body of Christ. That's what the spiritual gifts that God blesses you for. The, the gifts that God blesses Christ and all the other people is all to bless other people, to give people more wisdom, to give people more knowledge, to prophesy to people, to get to give them more hope, more faith. So keep that in mind. God will, all the chosen ones, they have a spiritual gift. And that's if you don't have many spiritual gifts yet. Keep on being obedient. Keep on striving. Keep on walking that straight and narrow path. God will continue to increase you. Okay, like I said, new levels, new devils. Defeat that devil and you'll see. Number seven is chosen ones will experience favor, not only with God, but with man. Okay, yes, chosen ones will experience favor with God and man. Okay, it talks about this in Luke chapter 2, verse uh, 52. Okay, when Christ was first in his ministry, not only did Christ gain favor by God, from God, but also through men. Okay, so like I said, yes, when you're when you're a chosen one, you're going to be hated by the world. People are going to hate you, but also you're going to gain favor too. It doesn't mean that every single tower human being on the person is going to hate you and condemn you and and be hateful and jealous and envious. No. But most people will, okay? There's also going to be people who are going to find favor for, okay? God will put the spirit on them to, to see that, hey, you're really about, you know, this is really my son or this is really my daughter, okay? And I'll leave that verse somewhere on the screen too, okay? So, yes, God, you will experience favor with God and man, okay? God will give you the increased favor with God and man, especially when it's to do his will. Like I said, it's never to be arrogant, to be boastful, to make you, to puff you up. No, absolutely not, you know? When God's giving you, increasing you in favor, gotta be more humble when god's giving you all those spiritual gifts more humble okay so always keep that in mind guys these are seven things that all you chosen ones were experienced if you guys experienced more like i said in the beginning of this video i could have made this way longer let me know in the comments below if you made it this far don't forget to like the video and if you like more of this content subscribe to the channel i love you guys so much i'm out peace